Daming is the brand new four star coming to Genshin for Lantern Rite in version 4.4. I think a lot of people, myself included, when they first saw his design were really quite underwhelmed as he seemed like just some generic anime character, but they ended up falling in love with him after seeing his beautiful animation. But the question always still lingered. He's a four star. A four star DPS. Not only do four stars lately in Genshin Impact, aside from Chevrus, not have a good track record, but four star DPSs have an even worse one. And for good reason. It's basically like if I'm going to use a main DPS, which I can only have one of on my team, they take a huge amount of resources to build more than any other type of character. If I'm going to invest all these resources and choose them as my only DPS, why would I choose one that's just inherently worse than other characters that are five stars because of their lower stat line? Well, everything is about to change with Gaming based on people seriously analyzing the trailer. And somehow, I don't know, people have seem to have some information about this character. They were making videos on his math weeks ago. I don't know how this happens. I've got no idea. Maybe they're just godlike at predicting. But for whatever reason, it seems like it's obvious that Gaming might actually be pretty overpowered as a DPS. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. I want to get one thing out of the way. His animations look fire, um, literally and figuratively. The, the LED light up is insane. His cute little guy is insane and I really like his gameplay where he integrates you know the lion dance um, tradition and the lion dance animations into his attack string it looks really flashy it looked really wild and really fun um, I have like a couple questions concerns like just just wondering I wonder how it's really gonna feel to play like it looks sort of chaotic and all over the place and I don't know how fluid and smooth it looks I'm I'm just not sure it doesn't look fluid and smooth to me but I think when you actually play it, it, it might be really fun. I think it's very possible and potentially likely that it's really, really fun to play. Uh, and it definitely looks cool. So that that's definitely, you know, I wanted to get that out of the way. And then I want to look at his kit next. So pounces forward using the Wushu Arts, leaping into the air after coming into contact with a target or surface. After gaming used Bestial Ascent to rise into the air, he will use the especially powerful plunging attack, Charmed Cloud Strider, when performing a plunging attack. The damage from the plunging attack is converted to power damage, cannot be overwritten. Upon landing, he'll consume HP, can't be reduced by a th certain threshold, and it'll be plunging attack damage. So obviously he's made, you know, with Cloud Retainer in mind, because Cloud Retainer boosts plunge damage, but I don't think that, and this is just his, uh, this is just his normal attack string, by the way. His normal attack string has plunging attack built into it, which is really, really neat, something we're not used to seeing. His skill, oh wait, that, that was his skill. I don't know, I don't like the way that they, I don't like the way that they do this it's like they're outlining the normal attack string and then they're outlining the skill but the text doesn't change and then they're outlining the burst but the text doesn't change so it's like they just have one line of text and they don't actually go through what each of the abilities does that's really really frustrating to me but his skill is also a plunging attack so I'm going to go on, I'm going to get some other sources for his kit because Genshin's really falling apart here. So when they say Bestial Ascent, this is just his, this is, this is his skill they're describing, even though it's highlighting his normal, normal attack and burst, etc. It's his burst that does the special infused plunging attack. Great. Uh, and then his burst applies Pyro to himself. He recovers a fixed amount of HP, summons his companion to smash into the target, dealing ALU Pyro damage. Very epic. And he'll then roll to a nearby location. The, the, the the companion will move to reload the world to nearby location and then move towards gaming when it links up he'll leave the field and reset the cooldown for the elemental skill so basically by you're going to use your skill into burst then probably use your skill again pretty dope while his stance is active his resistance to interruptions increased very nice we love that and then when he lands with a charmed cloud striker so the plunge or completes the forward pounced attack from bestial ascent he'll summon his little buddy again um, and you can only have one on the field simultaneously and the effect is cancelled when he leaves the field. So he needs to be, he needs to stay, he can't re, can't refresh the skill um, to go off. So pretty cool. It looks like his burst will be a main part of his damage. Um, he has a ta and it, he has a, a passive that his plunging attack regains his HP and that he gets more healing when he uses a plunging attack. So, okay, he's a plunging attack carry. And as we talked about in the Cloud Retainer video, plunging attacks are some of the most powerful scaling attacks in the game. And not only that, they don't hit too often. So when you're a character like 
like Yoimiya, for example, you can't vaporize every single one of your hits because your hits happen too fast. But a character like Gaming, because they focus mostly on plunging attack, his attacks are much less frequent and they always apply pyro. They always have a big multiplier. So they're going to benefit a lot more from transformative reactions. So being able to melt or sorry, ampli ampli melt multiplicative reactions, not sorry, not like the opposite of transformative reactions, um, melt and vaporize attacks that mostly, you know, most characters, even that focus on vaporize, don't vaporize every single one of their hit. Hu Tao, yes, she vaporizes all of her charge attack, but she doesn't vaporize all of her hits, like her normal attack, things like that. So being able for Gaming to vaporize the vast majority of his main damage, being his plunging attacks, means that if you build your teams right, he's really going to hit big numbers and hit them consistently. There's a couple synergies that come to mind as well. So obviously his normal attacks, you can see most of these aren't infused with pyro. So infusing them with pyro, as you would expect, will increase the amount of pyro damage he's going to be doing. So using him with a character like C6 Bennett might be really, really powerful for, for him. It might substantially increase his power. And I know not everyone has C6 Bennett. I know not everyone wants to go for C6 Bennett. But if you're going to play Gaming, we'll, we'll obviously test it. I can only test it with C6 Bennett, obviously, um, because that's because I can't undo it. But I think it might be really worth it, potentially. Potentially. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously, don't do anything before the testing has already come out on it. But I think C6 Bennett's going to be really good for him, in addition to all the buffs you get from Bennett. Like, he's an attack scaling character. Um, he has perfect synergy with Bennett. He also seems to have really insane synergy with Farina, similarly to how Novelette has great synergy with Farina by maxing out fanfare much easily. Gaming will be able to do the same. And because he works with plunging attacks, Cloud Retainer, he should also have great synergy with. So it's hard to imagine his best team not being Cloud Retainer, Bennett, and Farina. Um, but I don't think that's going to be his only team. I think Melt is going to be really impactful for him and, uh, and has great potential around Melt. I think other Bennett teams, maybe Double Hydro, has has good potential. Uh, we'll, ha we'll have to wait and see. I don't think you'll need Bennett to play with him. I don't think you'll need Cloud Retainer. I don't think you'll even need Farina to make good teams with him. I think he'll have good options with a lot of teams, but it's really, it's really hard to say. I'll be testing him at C0 and at C6 because I'll have access to him early. Uh, I won't be wishing for a C6, but fortunately I'll be able to test his C6 a ton um, in, in advance. So I'll test him with everyone. I'll test him with Melt teams. I'll test him with Vaporize teams. Um, because what I'm hearing is if you have his C4 or his C6 and C6 Bennett, if you have like this continuum, like you're getting closer and closer to having everything, um, his numbers are looking really, really insane. If you watch someone like the Genshin Scientists or like the Jeff on his Clips channel talking about things, his numbers are looking potentially comparable to other five-star DPSs of a high caliber. And we're not talking about like Yoimiya levels or even Klee levels. We're talking about Hu Tao levels. We're talking about Al Haitham levels of DPS, which is really, really cool um, that a four-star, even if they have to be C6, that a four-star DPS would reach those levels. Characters like Yan Fei have never reached those levels. So I'm really, really interested in playing him and seeing him how good he feels because this is where I kind of bring everything together because obviously we've got these people saying this, these people saying this. My question is, how will it feel to play these plunging attacks? He kind of rolling around and moving around. How fluid the characters are getting knocked around. How much AoE does he have? Or is he going to be a single target DPS? Can I use him in AoE? Is he going to be a pain to reposition or is it kind of fluid? Is he going to be fun to play? Is it going to be satisfying? Are you going to hit all of your hits or is he going to miss some? Is he going to not get some vapes? You have to do a weird setup. How fluid is it going to play? Because his theoretical DPS is one thing, but the practical DPS is another. So this is why units like Novelette and and uh, Navia are so, so highly regarded by the community. Obviously, Novelette even to a bigger degree, but it's because their DPS is very easy to achieve. Characters that are a bit more difficult, that have more complex DPS. Obviously, people know that Linny is really good, but they don't perceive him as highly as Navia and Novelette, even though he has very similar DPS output, because it's not as easy to perform form. This is the same thing like Klee. Klee has extremely high DPS potential, but people don't really perceive Klee in a very good light. And obviously Klee doesn't reach, you know, Novelette levels, but but still she reaches much higher than most people would think. And so my question for Gaming is his theoretical DPS is very high. How does his practical DPS actually come into play? And so that's what I'm going to be testing out. I, I don't really have much more to say. I think it's, it's, it, there, there's a big question of, you know, what, what's, what's that going to look like? Because it is just, how fun, how satisfying, how easy will it be to play? How easily will it be to get the max potential of this character? And we really just won't know until we test it. So let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if I missed anything. If I missed anything, I'll put it in the pinned comment and make sure to subscribe because I'll be testing him on day one. So subscribe so you can see that. And 
we'll see you later. Take care. Bye for now.